What do you get when you mix insecurity, ego, and greed? You get, in my opinion, one of the worst Roblox game development studios. From sending cease and desist letters to minors, to taking down games for having square pets, to even trying to sell NFTs to children. All while on top of running a casino for children. Today, we'll be taking a deep dive into the heavily controversial history of one of the most infamous game development studios known as Big Games. But guys, before we get into any of that, make sure you are subscribed because we're trying to hit 100k by the end of the year and we are getting very, very close. We're now almost less than 10k away. So this story starts over 10 years ago with this Roblox developer named Preston, also known as Build Into Games. But for this video, we're just going to be calling him Preston. Preston started his journey on Roblox by creating some moderately successful Roblox games like Limited Tycoon. This here is some footage of it and uh, I do have to say, this is like one of the first ever simulators on Roblox. It wasn't called a simulator or anything, but it had like the same similar concept to it. So Preston was a pretty big innovator back then day, as he pretty much pioneered a genre that wasn't even a thing back then. Like th there was no such thing as simulators back then. But uh, I guess Limited Tycoon had the same sort of gameplay structure, which is kind of interesting. But in 2014, he rise the ranks and became one of the most famous Roblox developers by creating one of the most popular games known as Guest Offense. This year is Guest Offense. It's a wave-based survival game, and it was completely unique, and it was a very cool game. And I remember playing this all the time as a kid. But pretty much, you just kill all these different guests, and you'd have to defend the statue in the middle. It was a lot of fun, and there really weren't too many different wave-based survival game similar to this. It was unique for it to be on Roblox where you could just directly hop into a lobby and play with other people. This game immediately put him on the map and pretty much made him one of the biggest prospects within the rising developmental community on Roblox. Now, after his first guest defense, he decided to double down and work on a brand new game. And this new game was called Guest Defense 2. Now, you can see here that it was pretty unique as it used a lot of systems that really weren't seen on Roblox at the time. Like, there was literally a full-on matchmaking lobby, global servers, all of that. He was obviously a very talented developer, and mind you, he did all of this before I believe he was like 15 years old, which is pretty mind-blowing. Now, the next game he decided to work on after that was a game known as Giant Survival. Giant Survival was pretty much a game where you would go ahead and fight a giant monster, and you would shoot stuff at it, and you could even spawn in as the monster and kill everybody on the server. It was a lot of fun, but this game was a little bit different. This game actually showed Preston that he could turn what he's doing into a full-on career as this game amassed over 10 million visits and uh i could assume it probably made a lot of money so after making giant survival 1 he decided to work on the next game known as giant survival 2 and this game was also pretty interesting but something pretty unique about this game is it actually featured loot crates now if you don't know what loot crates are they're pretty much what you see in almost every simulator with eggs where it's kind of like a slot machine where you, you want to like try to get the best thing and that's what giant survival 2 featured which Preston would become very accustomed to. But Giant Survival 2 didn't really take off the same way as Giant Survival 1 did. And that was because Roblox was changing. Roblox games started to focus more on engagement rather than making a unique experience that hasn't been made anywhere else. And right when that started to happen, the brand new simulator trend started to take off. Fast paced, super engaging gameplay, and tons of ways for you to spend your money on. This here is Mining Simulator. And Mining Simulator was extremely successful because it featured something no other simulator had. This was probably the biggest Roblox simulator at the time, and it was the first game to ever feature this. These sort of pets in a cubicle shape. Now, uh, if you've played Roblox, you've definitely seen these, but every single simulator started to take note and started to add those pets into their simulators. But Preston decided to do something smart. Since kids really loved pets, and every simulator was adding pets to their simulators, he decided to make the Roblox game known as Pet Simulator. Now, this game was super engaging and it became one of the top experiences on Roblox. As you can see, uh, it, there was a lot of stuff going on and this game really doubled down on eggs, which at the time wasn't really common. As simulators kind of had a mechanic where you would pretty much be doing something like you would have a backpack or you'd have a tool where you go mine stuff. Pet Simulator had none of that. Your tool was the pet and how you progressed was by unboxing more pets. It was a pretty unique gameplay loop and the game was pretty free to play. Obviously you could pay to win, but still it, it was 
free to play. Like, you could still enjoy the game without spending a dime. But in 2019, the game started to dwindle, and Preston decided to totally update his aging game. He decided to make this brand new game known as Pet Simulator 2. But something unique about this game was it wasn't pay to win at all, and it was mainly free to play. But the issue with this is the game didn't do that well. Primarily because as much as it sucks, Kids love pay to win. So Preston went back to the drawing board and made a brand new game. This game was called Pet Simulator X. And uh, I don't really need to give any introduction. If you've played Roblox, you've played this game once. Now, this game pretty much took what Preston learned from Pet Simulator 1 and Pet Simulator 2, combined it together, and created an extremely pay to win, but also pretty fun experience. As you could free to play the game at the very beginning when it launched. But this would soon change. Pet Simulator became so big that it became one of the biggest games ever on Roblox, amassing hundreds of thousands of players at any given moment. And when Preston saw that, well, he saw that there was money to make. So updates started becoming less free to play and more pay to win. And Preston really started to take advantage of his younger players. But the first real controversy would come about a year after the game's release. And that was when they decided to add NFTs to their game. Now, involving kids with NFTs NFTs, since uh, that was primarily the player base of Pet Simulator X, is a morally questionable thing to do. Like, you're, you're getting kids involved in cryptocurrency. But considering the price of these NFTs were over $10,000, the moral questions if this was an okay thing to do uh, immediately got answered to the sum of no. Now, this PNG actually gave you something, though, unlike all the other PNGs that you could buy with cryptocurrency. This NFT gave you a pet in Pet Simulator X. It was this pet, the unicorn pet right here. So, uh, I mean, I guess that's kind of cool, but for $10,000, who is buying this? This would be like if the Wiggles had an NFT where you could meet the Wiggles for $10,000. Like, kids are playing this game. It, it doesn't make any sense. But when you start looking at what Preston was doing, it did actually make a lot of sense. Preston, a little before this, decided to flood all of the Roblox advertisements with this. This here says, Raise DevX. Now, DevX is pretty much the developer exchange for Robux to USD. And they're quite stupid. Developers on Roblox only make about 20 to 30% of, like, what their whole game made. Roblox pockets the extra 70 percent of revenue for apparently servers moderation and all that sort of stuff and just for reference this is well below market value as stuff like steam nintendo and xbox only take a 30 percent cut so you're left with 70 percent of the revenue but um it's worth noting that they don't have moderation or servers all they're doing is just uh hosting your game on their website but still it obviously should be raised but coming from one of the uh richest developers that have ever graced roblox it definitely was a little common condescending as this dude had at least had a hundred million dollars in the bank by then the thing i was kind of sad about this too is if you advertise at all this day well preston pretty much outbid you so you lost all of your money that is not the first time preston screwed over small indie developers we'll get into that later but the reason why preston is so adamant on raising dev x is because he wants more money and when preston doesn't get his way well he decides to maybe bend the rules a little bit now it is against roblox's terms of service to go ahead and sell in-game items for usd so this nft thing was completely against roblox's terms of service because you cannot sell in-game items as an nft bypassing roblox's terms of service roblox ended up making a dev form post stating that they are not going to be allowing that stating here we are aware of a recent auction that was tied to roblox's creators intellectual property and we are conducting an internal review of what happened and long story short roblox put their foot down which is very rare they literally won't ban pizza but it was so serious that Roblox found it in their heart to go ahead and update their terms of service, say that you may not use third-party services or products to sell either directly or as a bundle in-game experience items, features, blah, blah, blah. But this would not be the end of big games slash Preston trying to bypass Roblox's terms of service. Ah, we all love plushies. You love plushies. I love plushies. Plushies. Well, so does big games. Oh, look at these cool little plushies right here. 
This one's so awesome. This plushie was almost $300. But originally, they wanted to sell it for almost $400, but there was such pushback that they sold it for $250. Now, you might be interested as to why it is so expensive. Well, it is because with this plushie from Pet Simulator X, Big Games himself, you get a epic little code. In that code, you can redeem in Pet Simulator X to get the actual pet that you just bought as a plushie in Pet Simulator. I'm pretty sure the people that made these plushies said somebody it was along like 20 or 30 dollars to actually manufacture and all that for these plushies that's what preston was paying per plushie so he is making well over 200 dollars every single sale on that for quite literally the code because uh who would spend 200 dollars on a plushie if it didn't come with the code and uh this also broke roblox's terms of service but uh they just didn't care they just batted an eye and uh to this day they still continue to sell overpriced plushies now soon after this happened a drama within big games started to take place. Now, people have been noticing that the game frequently got less free to play to the point that people had to spend two three hundred dollars to buy a, a pet in the game some pets people were spending upwards of five thousand us dollars <laughs> And the community was at a breaking point. Now, Pet Simulator was hyping up this update of the Diamond Mine update. Diamonds are a currency in Pet Simulator X, which uh, are hard to kind of get. They're, they're very grindy to get. Now, I think I should mention that this update was hyped up as a free-to-play update for quite some time by the developers. And when it released, it did something that enraged so many people. You pretty much had to sacrifice one of your rarest pets to go ahead and gain access to the Diamond Mine. And when you were in here, well, apparently it was really bad. You didn't get much out of it. So people really just wasted their money on something that wasn't even worth it. Now, the community was really mad. And they went raging at the developers about it, rightfully so. And then Preston decided to hit them with this beautiful work of art. How come free-to-play players are always the most entitled? We aren't perfect, but you can't expect to be given the world and then some when you are playing completely for free. We have to balance for everyone. And uh, it got a ton of hate. I mean, so much hate. He literally got ratioed in the replies. But this year was one of the first real cracks behind Preston because he was already surrounded in a lot of controversy up until this point. The next major crack was kind of a random one and just a super entitled one. So the guy under the group known as Badass Experiences he made a tweet called A New Badass Experience, boys. Preston decided to write with, hey, can you please not use our thumb slash icon? I enjoy your games. Keep up the great work. Well, after that, uh, he decided I to update the thumbnail with this and uh it used one of his thumbnails from i think it was my restaurant but like oh my god bro that is crazy that is crazy and then uh shortly after uh preston dmca'd his game and he uh, he updated the thumbnail to this feeding trash to rich people tycoon with uh preston saying how come free to play players are the most entitled that's definitely extremely petty to say the very least a especially to say uh i enjoy your games and then submit a dmca takedown request on their game over the thumbnail now uh after this the game itself just started getting increasingly more pay to win and even as to lately it is so bad this here was uploaded on october 23rd of this year these are the chances to get these rare pets it is over a one and a hundred million to get the vampire huge back you literally have a better chance of winning the lottery than getting any of those pets yeah i, I just want to say this real quick too like I, I have nothing against simulators or anything like that like i, I think they're pretty fun games but i think if you're making a simulator where the chances are to get like certain pets are one in a hundred million well i think at that point it's just gambling but anyways we have pretty much talked about all the old legacy drama now it is time to get into in my opinion the worst stuff big games and preston has done preston increasingly got more entitled and just weird on twitter but in september he wrote this tweet here that says sometimes i get curious and dig into people that talk crazy crap about me and with Without fail, every single time, they always copy my game. Like, dude, how can you hate on me? You spent months meticulously cloning my work. This was a great bait tweet. <laughs> I just said, tell me you're a massive loser without telling me you're a massive loser, Preston. That got almost a thousand likes, but here is uh, pretty much what sums it up. Hey guys, look at how stupid I am. F off, idiot. Joke's on them. I was only pretending. <laughs>
Uh, that's what Preston was pretty much doing there, but honestly, that was just a harmless tweet and uh, really started to show the insecurities of Preston kind of boiling out for everybody to see. But this was the first real glimpse into Preston's insecurities as, oh man, he really put them out for everybody to see coming soon. Preston began targeting simulators with 20 people playing them. Popular games like Arm Wrestle Simulator were DMCA requested by Preston. And for the reasons they were DMCA requested, requested were quite strange. Now, after a ton of controversy surrounding this to the point it got trending on Twitter, the community manager of Big Games put out some images that were quite shocking to say the very least. So this here on the right is something that they DMCA'd, which I could kind of understand, but scrolling down to here is where it gets crazy. They were DMCAing games over the square shape of pets. Some of these pets, like the shark, don't even look similar. Same with the elephant here. They were even copywriting the concept of stuff like gold machines because as you can see here these are two entirely different things now i made this tweet here pretty much asking the community manager of what you're considering dmca worthy and this here was the shark that they dmca they look nothing alike because you have to remember you can really only make a shark look so many ways in like a cubicle shape this shark here has one fin the eyes on these sharks are completely different there's a different amount of teeth different color for the mouth. Even the fins and the overall shape of it are entirely different. I made a side-by-side -side comparison and I asked Coilus, community manager of big games, and he said this. Josh used to be good, but he's basically the PR rep of Preston, so he says whatever Preston wants him to say. And then Josh said, I speak my own thoughts. I do as I please. I said, please let us know what your constant student is DMCA worthy. Clearly, are you guys going after developers for making cubicle pets? And he said, Clearly you aren't educated on DMCAs and IP. Here you go. And then uh, I sent them, how else do you make a, a shark? And laying out the different commonalities between the two pets he showed. And he here said, clearly you are educated with the uh, reply up here and then just got ratioed. I I'm starting to think you are educated on DMCA and IP. Are y'all gonna DMCA baby shark tomorrow? But yeah, they, they pretty much got memed into oblivion for this. I remember specifically Coilus stating that Pet Simulator X was the first game to feature cubicle pets. But as we discussed early in this video, that is just not true. He, he literally Really deleted his tweets and everything. Wait, let me find it. As you can see here, Mr. Bouchot made a tweet asking, why are you guys trying to take down games for cubicle pets? This game did it before you guys. Coilus stated here, right, because Petsim was made in a month, was in development way before. So Coilus was literally stating that Petsim was the first ever game to make cubicle pets, which is just not true. As you can see here, this is Fringus. He made these pets for one of his games all the way back in 2016. So it's pretty ridiculous for him to claim that they were the first people to make cubicle pets. That's just not true. This here, though, was a pretty crazy instance of them taking down a Roblox developer. The developer known as Meepcell went ahead and made a tweet, big games deleted my Axolotl Tycoon, and this is the game icon. Is there a reason for this? And Preston went ahead and sent two images. Apparently, these were from his game. Dude, first one, new logo, I used one year ago and deleted it. Second one is another game. I don't know what this is. And third one, too, I don't know what the hell this is. If you believe in yourself, file a counterclaim. And then Meepcell said he's 17 years old. So Preston, uh, you know, multi-millionaire, hundreds of millions of dollars is telling a 17-year-old to file a counterclaim and then to get into litigation with him, which is just mind-blowing. This here is grade A bullied, pretty much. And uh, coming from people within Preston's camp saying that they were the first people to make cube pets, these people are not trustworthy in the slightest. So I, I, I want to give Meep sell the benefit of the doubt here. Now, one of the most interesting things that happened is uh, this. Captain Tails said, can we put our differences aside and agree that Preston has officially gone too far? And this isn't a Ruben Sim, and this person is a furry. Something needs to be done about this. He cannot get away with what he's doing. As he's finding loopholes in the terms of service, Ruben Sim said, I will agree with the furry just this one time. Literally, history happened because of Preston's greed and his insecurities. That's just so funny. So I think the last drama I want to talk about today is a, a quite crazy one and this involves a roblox leaking account that was leaking pet simulator x assets now uh you might be thinking uh isn't this illegal you can't do this right well i think it's worth mentioning that roblox puts all of your assets so it's publicly viewable you can view any asset that is uploaded onto roblox as long as you have the id and these people were able to get that id and it is publicly accessible on roblox now all this group would do is take a screenshot of the asset and post it onto their Twitter. Now, Preston was completely fine with this, 
for years. But randomly, right before all this drama took place, he received a DMCA request on his Discord server. And not only that, they tried DMCAing his Twitter account. The person who runs this account, I asked, they're actually a minor, and uh, I can't find their tweet talking about it. I don't know if they have talked about it publicly, but I asked them for permission and they told me I can talk about this. He was sent a cease and desist letter from Preston to his house. That means Preston and his legal team found his address and hand-delivered him a cease and desist letter to a kid. Dog, he's literally a grown adult. He could be a billionaire for all we know, Preston. And uh, he is sending cease and desist letters to people that hype up their game. If that doesn't scream in security, I don't know what does. But that has pretty much been all the drama that Big Games has been surrounded by. Now, there's a lot more drama I haven't talked about in this video, like Bespoke Plush, but honestly, I don't really want to get into that because it's kind of nitty gritty, and uh, I honestly don't know what's real and what isn't. But overall, Big Games is a very horrible Roblox development group that puts money ahead of anything. And it's why I dislike them. I think they are a plague to Roblox. But I'd like to hear back from you guys on what you guys think about it. Do you guys like Big Games? But anyways, we're gonna end today's video here. Follow me on Twitter at RealSlep. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, everyone.